I love a good werewolf film. Not nearly as sought after as vampire or zombie films, the werewolf picture hasn't a very good reputation. There are not many classic werewolf films that spring to an average film fan's mind. I imagine most are aware, and mostly fond of, An American Werewolf in London, and maybe Joe Dante's The Howling, but aside from those, I've never seen the other werewolf films which I enjoy to be cited by anywhere other than internet gatherings of werewolf fans. I would love the opportunity to present this program of the werewolf films I do enjoy. There is a number of 20th century werewolf romps which I readily enjoy. One particular title from 1961 occupies a spot on this shelf. It is an extremely archetypical uh, European B-horror picture, one which demonstrates its limited effects budget sparsely in lieu of mood and mystery. This film is called Werewolf in a Girl's Dormitory, otherwise known by the title Lycanthropy. The plot concerns a girl's reformatory under distress after several students are killed, seemingly by wolves, in, uh, who live in the forest surrounding the building. A newly arrived teacher, Julian Olcott, is suspected by some to be a werewolf. We are taken on, essentially, a murder mystery until by the conclusion the secret lycanthrope is revealed at last. This is a fine mood movie, I think. The direction by one Paolo Huish, whose limited catalogue I am otherwise unfamiliar with, is somewhat reasonable. There isn't much ambition, but there is a certain competence to its staging. The direction of the action is nothing to write home about, but it gets the job done. The creature feature components of this film are far less prioritised than that of the murder mystery. I said before that I often don't mind, sometimes, if a lower budgeted horror or genre film focuses more on an aspect which the production can soundly, potentially, succeed with. To use a previous film of the day as an example, I am overall relieved that 1950s killer shark is a sea shanty as opposed to a creature feature. I mean, you can imagine what a 1950s proto Jaws, or proto Jaws knockoff rather, might have entailed. And so an unpleasant, moody murder mystery with a touch of lycanthropy is welcomed by myself. It gives the narrative an added polish of danger, of evil. There is a grimness to the atmosphere which keeps me involved. I like how serious and suspicious everyone in the cast is. Sometimes juxtaposed by the sarcasm of the students, the terror of the teachers is nicely hung over the murder investigations. I mean, the whole thing is very modest, you might say. This is certainly not one of those naughty sex romps like the women prison films of decades to follow, and I'm fairly happy about that in this case. I like the flat, banal ugliness of this one. It suggests a kind of rawness. It is very unromantic. If you've ever thought or felt to yourself, I would love to watch an older, moody, black and white European horror film, not a splatterfest, not softcore porn, just a moody monster film, not overly removed from the universal monster mashes, albeit much more sinister, and with a coherent yet mildly eventful storyline. No, this one is pretty perfect. As particular as that is to perhaps. It is so archetypically effective, I can't help but really enjoy it. It puts my head in a nice place for the day. Strange that's, that's what it takes. So this is why I popped on Wealth in a Girl's Dormitory for a second time in order to discuss it for today's program. I'm not necessarily trying to recommend this film, that's not really my goal with these shows, but I am putting the film in a place where in those viewing my content will know exactly whether they will enjoy this film or not. So once again, thanks again.